Second scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11. Hear the word of the Lord. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goats calf and the lion, the yearling together, a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I like that, Ryan. That's cool. This is the tenth and final installment of my sermon series on missional traits, traits of the missional church. And it's been a journey. Sent, the church is sent out into the world, not called into here. It's incarnational, reflecting God. Contextual is different. Every one of them. The kingdom is here. The church cultivates, takes time, develops. It's hospitable. Welcome. It's lay leg. You don't like that one, do you? That one keeps coming out. It's relational. It's about relationships. With God with each other. It's grace centered. All the rules, grace centered. This morning, I want to take on the challenge that it is guided by the Spirit. I want to share this from Ship of Fools magazine from 1997. The Pope took the opportunity to put Bob Dylan right when the two megastars headlined a big a gig together last week in Bologna. Dylan met his holiness on stage during a Catholic youth event before playing three of his best known songs. After the two men had shaken hands and exchanged a few words, the Pope stepped up to the microphone of the singer, the theological cleaners. You say the answer is blowing in the wind, my friend, he observed. So it is. But it's not the wind that blows things away. It is the wind that is the breath and life of the Holy Spirit, the voice that calls and says, come. Clearly enjoying the thunderous applause that greeted these words, the Pope continued in a style that would not have disgraced a TV evangelist. You ask me, how many roads must a man walk down before he becomes a man? I answer, one. There's only one road for man. It's the road of Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way and the life. The picture on the screen is by Edward Hicks, entitled Peaceable Kingdom, which references the second part of the Isaiah passage. We're celebrating Christmas in July, the birth of our Lord. We're looking for our Lord. Who knew? Maybe because we nailed him across, he hasn't come back. I don't know. But we're looking forward. We're looking forward to the great leader, to the one who inspired us. And perhaps the prophet Isaiah, this one, was wrestling with poor leadership. I think we know something about that. We're always looking for the one that's going to take us to the promised land, to fix everything. Maybe the next one, maybe the next one. And it's a struggle. We keep waiting, wondering, hoping, praying that there will come a day where the one who is the leadest brings us into peace. And I wonder 
when the one returns, would we recognize the divine? Would we listen? I've only been here for a little while, but I can tell you there's some common language that I find disturbing. One sense I've heard more times than I ever want to hear. I like my church just the way it is. I like my church just the way it is. My church? I don't know about you, I thought this thing belonged to Jesus Christ. That's my understanding. Granted, my understanding may be limited. We all have opinions, some based in personal experience, some based in theology of what the church should be. If I asked a question, went around this room, everybody have a different answer. Well, I think, I believe, this is what I want. And it gets disturbing because the churches from one coast to coast around the world who say, if you don't do it my way, I'm leaving. It's kind of problematical because I'm not sure Jesus would do it our way. Matter of fact, I'm fairly convinced he wouldn't. And I wonder how many people, if the divine walked in and said, here's what needs to happen, would get up and walk out. Let that one sink in for a because I'm pretty sure Jesus doesn't do things my way. Matter of fact, I'm pretty confident of that. And maybe that's just as well. Because what's important is that we do things God's way. And therein lies the challenge. The missional church is supposed to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And that may be one of the most confusing aspects of all the traits of the original church. How do we know that we're being guided by the Spirit? And I've done a little bit of reading on the subject. I've explored it. Certainly as East USA Presbyterian, we trust that the body will be guided by the Spirit. And oftentimes that means that the body will do something that as individuals we don't necessarily approve of. Chairs, cues, enough said. What I do know is that oftentimes the Spirit guides us to uncomfortable situations. I don't want to say always, I don't want to make statements. Sticking my hand into the nest of vipers does not strike me as the most brilliant idea. But if God says that's where peace will be, are we not called to go there? The ox and the lion. I remember Lion King, the animated movie, and Mufasa was talking to Sim and talking about the circle of life. And Mufasa mentions the antelope, and Sim goes, But don't we eat the antelope? How wonderful the world would be if we could lie down in green pastures with our enemies and become friends. But we get so caught up in our understanding of right and wrong. And we expect God to follow our understanding of right and wrong. And the church from coast to coast and around the world has seen fit to decide who's in the Christian club and who's not. And what the entrance requirements are. Who gets to eat at the table and who doesn't. Who's going to heaven and who's going to I had a professor in the seminary, Dr. Mallon. At one point he was president of Fuller Theological Seminary. 
And I admire him because he swallowed his pride. One of his classes, he's a very conservative gentleman. He said he didn't really believe that women belonged in the pulpit. Sorry, he said. But, but, hold on, hold on. We're not in Rome yet. Don't kill the messenger. He came back and clarified it. He says, I don't like it. But then the scripture said, he points out, there will be no male, no female, no Jew, no Gentile. He says, I mean, I like it, but I didn't write scripture. And because of that, my personal choice is thrown out. This is what the Spirit tells me. I admire him because he swallowed his pride. He was guided by something higher, something more. One of the traits of the missional church is we're guided not by our wants, not by our desires, not by our understandings, not by our comfort, but by the Spirit. Through prayer, through reflection, through study, through listening, through song, we strive to seek not our own will, but the will of God, and follow that. And it's not about liking it. And that's one of our struggles. We like our church nice and comfortable. Where we get a warm, fuzzy feeling. We walk out smiling on Sunday mornings. And yet, certainly when I read the red words, it's not all about our comfort. As much as it is about our building God's kingdom. It's been a little while, but I do remember those years of construction, especially in July. And while I did not necessarily use the hammer or the come along or the saws or anything else, building stuff is hard. July and August are really horrible, and so are the cold months. Building is hard. It's challenging. And sometimes you take two steps forward, and things get messed up, and you gotta step back. And it used to drive me crazy as a construction manager. I'd get a blueprint for a house. And yes, I was far smarter than the architects, I thought. Construction manager and choices. We like to take blueprints and go, well, if this guy had only done this, this, and this, it would be a great house. Now, I was smarter than other construction managers because I knew that's why I was employed for so long. If I changed that blueprint without permission, I would not be employed. I had to follow that plan. And gradually, I would admit over time, a large percentage of time, okay, the architect knew something I didn't know. He was right. I only said those words quietly when nobody was around. <coughs> and I think that's where we find ourselves on a daily basis in the church. We want to build God's kingdom. We do. Or at least we say we do. But we want to provide the blueprints. God, we're going to build your kingdom, but let me tell you how we're going to do it. We forget we're following God's plan, not ours. And God's got a much bigger perspective than we do. We can't see everything. We don't see all the easy. We don't see all the high wires. We don't see all the pitfall. We don't see all the faulty material. We are participants in building a perfect kingdom. And yet we ourselves are imperfect. Thus, we are called to trust the Spirit. I'll admit, and I'll leave it on this note, it's hard, it's uncomfortable, it's challenging, it's nerve-wracking, but I encourage us all 
remind ourselves, whose kingdom are we building after all? Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, like so long ago, we're searching. We're searching for you, for your wisdom, for your love, for your righteousness. We are searching, wondering, when will you come back? And will we recognize you? Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes to your will, your plans, that we may have the courage, the will, and desire to follow you, to trust you. Lord Jesus, use our hands and our feet, and when necessary, our words, to build your kingdom. All these things we pray in your name.
we've been praying for my friend Craig, uh, the minister who had uh, cancer of the tongue and had surgery, and now um, he's ready for radiation. And I don't even know how they do radiation in the mouth, but please pray for Craig. He's a great guy, and this is really difficult. Lord, hear our prayers. They left Cindy on a quarantine. Yeah, I noticed when you walk in, it's like, ooh, they got the jail set up. Uh, yes, uh, um, my dad and I are both happy to be out in the world again. And, and uh, we spent a long time with quarantine and, and isolation. So we're, we're grateful to see all of you. And um, I, I had a uh, oncology appointment uh, Friday and uh, going pretty well, although the clinical trial drug that I'm on has finally kind of run its course. So uh, we've got, we'll be kind of moving on to the next phase. So we've got a lot of testing and, and stuff coming up uh, this week. And we'll see where it goes. Lord, here are our prayers. Welcome back. So obviously prayers of joy. This is a baby. We are it's a baby. Alien. <laughs> this is, yeah, she's kind of an alien right now. It's a girl. We're due in December. It's been two long years of trying, but here we are, and that's why I haven't been here uh, because we had to wait. And I've been showing for a couple months. So I am 17 weeks today, and we are just extremely happy to be here where we are right now because doctor said it wouldn't happen without medical intervention and God had a different plan. So here we are. Congratulations. Thank Lord, you. hear our prayers. Tim, choir member. Anybody else? I really need to have my mind Prayers of Thanksgiving that my mother got a really stellar report from her oncologist, and um, also prayers for my sister-in-law, Lily Beth Giles, um, who's going to be facing cancer treatment as well. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayers. Taking Seattle turns? Yep. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. Not even behind Hal, not my fault. I'd like prayers for my friend Penny Lassiter, whose daughter Rachel died from breast cancer last week, on her funeral tomorrow, for her and her family. Prayers of peace. Lord, hear our, hear our prayers. prayers. Today. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you with bowed heads, bent knees, and open hearts. We come to you with joys, with anxieties, with sadness. We come as we are, a broken people. As we look around your creation, our world, and we see war, we see violence, we see the suffering of disease, we see divisions in our world, in our nation, in our communities, and yes, horrifically, even in our own families. How we forget to be grace-centered. How we turn away from your love. 
come to you, oh God, not knowing quite what to expect, yet hoping for your best. We ask for peace. We ask for healing. We ask for comfort. We ask for your will. Blessed Lord, each of us has prayers that we offer. Prayers of celebration as we gather to celebrate your birth, as we celebrate your birth every day. Prayers of joy as we celebrate friends and family coming together, as we celebrate vacations, as we celebrate opportunities to serve you and to serve others. But we also come to you with burdens, economic burdens, health burdens, burdens of loss, burdens of confusion. Lord Jesus, we come to you now that we may lift up the prayers of our hearts in the silence. Jesus Christ, Messiah, the one who came. He taught us so many things. Among those great lessons, he taught us how to pray. We ask that you hear us now with one voice, praying, and he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. sake of those in need, for the care of the church in proclaiming Christ's birth, and for all that God calls us to do, let us gather our tithes and offerings.
on this glad new day for all the earth. We are grateful for giving hearts, made joyful in the gift of your Son. For you, O oh God, are generosity itself. Bless these gifts we offer to the benefit of those in need. Bless our lives in service of sharing your love in the world. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Please stand and join me as we affirm what the church believes. And today it is the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and unmade, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. There's cake. And I know from past experience that nobody really wants to take it all home. So there's cake. I can only eat so much. Don't challenge me on this one. The other thing, I heard that. The other thing is, as you walk into the fellowship hall, the general store is there. 
Terry told me he's bored and he wants to take groceries over this week. So stop by the general store. As we're celebrating, help somebody else celebrate a meal. In my heart, I believe the world will know peace when we stop worshiping the three gods of me, myself, and I. The world will know peace when we begin to love God and love one another. Take some time. Listen to the Spirit. I'm not going to stand here and tell you it'll be easy, it'll be comfortable, but I will tell you it'll be worth it. Listen to the Spirit and follow God in this wonderful journey we call life. May the God of creation, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our friend, our teacher, and so much more, the Holy Spirit, present now, be with us till we gather again. Our friends, as you leave this place, may you celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior every day. May you look joyfully to his return. And may you listen to the voice of the Spirit. When you return, bring a story to share and laughter to spread. My friends, may you all go in peace.